2010 micro FRQ number three. We've got the quantity of good X demanded and supplied at various prices. Is the demand for good X relatively elastic, inelastic, unit elastic, perfectly elastic, or perfectly inelastic when the price decreases from 30 to 20? couple ways to do this. One, you could, if your brain's big enough, percentage, in cha percentage change in quantity demand over percentage change in price. This is our PED formula. We could also do, um, let me back that up one second. We could also use the formula QD2 minus QD1 divided by QD1 over P2 minus P1 divided by P1. I'm going to use this one. Um, I think I could do it both ways, but I'm just going to use this one because it's easy. Let's make sure that we understand how to do this. Uh, we started at 30. We went to 20. So this price was P1. This was P2. Our quantity demand 1 and our quantity demand 2. So now we're just going to plug in the numbers, right? Uh, QD2 was 3 minus 1 divided by 1 over P2 was 20. 20 minus 30 divided by 30. 3 minus 1 is 2 over 1 gives us obviously 2. It would give us a negative 2, but we know that PED values are all absolute values. So no negatives need apply. And then 20 minus 30 is 10 divided by um, 30. Sorry, the price would be negative here, uh, not the quantity demand. 10 uh, divided by 30 is obviously 0.33. So 2 divided by 0.3, I think is 6.06, .06, something like that. Um, this is obviously very elastic not perfectly, so we would say that it is relatively elastic. Um, okay, and how would we explain this? Uh, let's do it the other way. Let's do the total revenue test, just to make sure that we're doing it. Sometimes I like doing the total revenue test just to check that I made my numbers correct here, because I'm not the smartest math guy. So total revenue is always just price times quantity. Um, is going to give us total revenue. So it looks like my initial price was 30 and the initial quantity was 1. And that's going to give me, I'm going to do it this side because I'm like a child. I got to do it the same way every time. 30 times 1. My total revenue was 30. Then the price fell to 20 and we sold 3 units. So 20 times 3 is obviously 60. It looks like when my price went down, my total revenue went up. Now, there's a very easy way, sort of a graph to use to make sure that you're recognizing this the same way as you should. Uh, here's a demand curve sloping down. We're going to use a total revenue curve, which is just a semicircle here. Understand that where that total revenue maximizes, I'm going to draw a line straight up through that. Where it hits my demand curve, I'm just going to call that unit elastic. Everything below on the demand curve is inelastic. Everything above on the demand curve is elastic. Now, this is just a good model to use to make sure that you understand these total revenue price uh, quantity questions, whether we're in the inelastic or the elastic section of the demand curve. So what I do know is that when my price went down, my total revenue went up. I know that that's got to be the elastic section. Look at it. If price goes down and I'm in the elastic section of my demand curve, can you see my total revenue went up? Obviously, if we had been inelastic and our price went down, we're in the inelastic section of our demand curve and our price goes down, our total revenue would have gone down. And this should make sense, right? Obviously, if you're elastic, the quantity demand changes by a larger percentage than the price. So as I lower the price, many, many more customers buy my stuff and my total revenue is going to go up. So anytime price goes down, total revenue goes up, you must be in the elastic section of your demand curve. Looks like we're doing the right thing so far. Um, two, is the supply of good X relatively elastic, yada, 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 uh, when the price decreases from 30? When the price decreases from 30, 
to 20, quantity supply doesn't change at all. And S, in essence, all I have is a vertical supply curve. Doesn't matter that uh, the price went down for whatever reason, quantity supplied does not change. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, we can know that, and that means it's obviously perfectly inelastic. Oops, I'm about to circle the wrong one. Perfectly inelastic, straight up and down, quantity supply does not change at all, no matter what happens to the price. Um, all right. If a per unit tax is imposed on good X, how is the burden of the tax distributed between the buyers and the sellers of a good? So, this is just the understanding, and I, I think this one is hard unless you can sort of see it, maybe even just understand that when we have a perfectly inelastic supply, the understanding here is that the producer of this good is going to pay all of the tax. There's a quick tip just to understand that whoever has the most inelastic demand or supply is the one who's going to pay. But if somebody has a perfectly inelastic supply curve or demand curve, if it's perfectly inelastic supply, the producer will pay all. If it's perfectly inelastic demand, the consumer would pay all of this tax. So know how these work. Obviously, perfectly inelastic supply, producers pay all. Perfectly inelastic demand, consumers would pay all. We only need this one. Uh, so we would just say that the tax is fully paid by the uh, supplier or producer, whatever you feel comfortable using. I'm going to get rid of this. All right. Assume that the income elasticity of demand, this is YED, income elasticity of demand, is negative 2. You should have already known, as soon as you see income elasticity of demand and you see a negative number, you know it's got to be an inferior good. You don't have to read any more. You knew that because we know that when income goes up, you can either buy more normal goods or more inferior goods right? Obviously, when income goes up, if you buy more normal goods, both of these are going in the same direction. That means it's a positive number. There's a positive relationship here. But if income goes up and inferior, the amount of inferior goods I buy, and this means I get richer, I obviously buy less inferior goods. Can we see that these are going in opposite directions? They're negatively related. So by seeing that negative number, you know immediately it must be uh, an inferior good. All right. They're saying that using a correctly labeled graph of the market for good Y show the effect of a significant increase in income on the equilibrium price of good Y. So this is just sort of understanding your determinants of demand. Um, t -t -t we have Obviously, what's going on here, I don't even need the supply curve. I can really just get rid of that and just use a demand curve. All right. It is the understanding here that um, show the effect of an increase on income. As income goes up, the demand for, let's just say, inferior goods goes down. So it's really just a leftward shifting um, of the demand curve here. I think that makes sense. Yeah, this should be good Y right here. All right, messy as usual, but hopefully we covered something to uh, help. Uh, let me know if um, that was okay. Just leave me a message in the box in the chat. All right, guys, be safe. Take care. Be safe.